February, I read three books that focused on personal experiences and relationships. And today I thought I would run through each of the books, tell you what I thought about it, go over the plot a little bit, my rating and whether or not I'd recommend the book. So I'm going to go through them in the order I read them in in February. First, we've got Really Good Actually by Monica Heisey. And this book focuses on Maggie, who is a 29 year old who is about to get divorced. And her marriage lasted about two years. The book focuses on her dealing with divorce. Uh, her, her life's completely changing because she can't afford her rent. She's not enjoying her job. She has to get back into the dating pool and how she's managing basically. Now, this book was slightly funny. I'm not going to say it wasn't because there were some moments where I pissed myself laughing. Not to give any spoilers because I'm going to be vague, but the scene where she's in a workout class, like cycling workout class and she starts screaming something i howling laughing on the floor that was brilliant <laughs> and it ended okay like i didn't mind the ending however this book took me months to finish because it never gripped me i started this in november with a book club with a friend and we both had to be like oh god have you read it yet we need to keep pushing through it was a bit disastrous and we finished it in February. Now, this is not a long book. This should not take three months to, fin to finish. Three and a half months to finish. Jesus. But it did. And the main reason for that was Maggie. I did not like Maggie. I feel like that's the point in a way. But... I mean, we all go through shit situations in life. We And she's going through divorce. It's a big stressful experience and it's a big life change but it doesn't warrant you to be an arsehole <laughs> like we all go through crap and we can be more selfish you can be a bit mean and you can lean on your friends more you could you know you know what i mean you can change your behavior and it's not really who you are but you get back into normal life basically however maggie is just not a nice person i think in general she's just not nice and because it's from her point of view you think her friends are being not good friends the interactions she has with her husband soon to be ex-husband and the interactions she just has with everyone in everyday life it's from her point of view so you feel sorry for her but there's changing moments throughout the book where you realize actually her friends are really nice and they cannot cope with her anymore and that's the same with basically all our relationships in this book it's yeah it's quite sad at times i'm not gonna lie i think the point is you do you're meant to feel sorry for maggie but in the end i just did not feel sorry for her she was really annoying i didn't get her humor and this was deemed an LGBT book, like genre. And I would say that that is a massive cop out. I don't think you can class this as that because she has a few experiences trying to date some women. And it gave me that vibe of, oh, I need to try a new experience. So I'm going to try, I'm going to date women to see what it's like. But she doesn't actually like women. I don't know if anyone else felt that, but that's the vibe I got. So all in all, it just fell flat for me. It didn't slap. I thought it was going to be so funny. But yeah, I would not recommend this personally, but you might enjoy it. And overall, I gave it a 2.5 because I did finish it and I did laugh. Other than that, it didn't wow me. <laughs> the next book is Honey and Spice by Baloo Babaloa. And this is a fake dating romance trope set in college the story focuses on kiki our fmc who runs a radio show called brown sugar with her best friend amia and the show revolt rev i can't say revolves i've s tried to say this word so many times the show revolt why revolves <laughs> around giving relationship advice and just genuine advice for women so they can 
protect themselves against waste men and crappy men basically so not to get gaslighted not to pit each other against pick pit each other against what is that saying pit each other against each other that doesn't sound right but you get the gist like if you're going over the same guy it's the guy's fault and it's not you two if you both didn't know about each other kind of thing like she just gives relationship advice and to elevate her radio show she ends up having to fake date this guy malachi who is a new boy on the block who has dated around different friendship groups and is causing some drama in the end she's like i should date this guy because he's they've got some like spark going on they've had an, like an encounter in person together so she was like you know what he's got good banter he's got good chat if we fake date i can get him on the show and talk about the boy's experience and the girl experience from her about dating and see if it will boost their ratings it's really really good i freaking love this the chemistry and the mm, just the spice and banter kiki and malachi had i loved it i loved them instantly as soon as they started fake dating i was just like mm -hmm -hmm. not only that i just have to big up kiki i freaking loved her i am a fantasy girly through and through and i am a sucker for a badass female main character who is strong and doesn't take shit basically and i haven't had that in a non-fantasy book before until honey and spice kiki is amazing i want her to be my friend i want to know her i want to hang out with her i love her friendship with her best friend amia like their banter and their love for each other is so cute but kiki goes through it in this there's so much like we learn so much about kiki and about her past crappy situation she's got going on plus her thing with malachi there's a lot of layers to understand and get to know Kiki and why she is the way she is. And this book does it so well. I recommend, recommend, recommend this book. Read it. I gave it a four out of five. The reason why it's not a five out of five is it had some really cringy one-liners in there. Um, like... I could t pick up a star from the sky and wear it as an earring or something like that, which I could just couldn't get into. And I thought there would be some killer spice in this. This is my fault for going into it thinking that. So I was let down, but there's not much spice. And when there is spice, it's quite tame, I would say. And... I mean, Spice was in the name, so I actually, I did think it was going to be spicy, and it's not, so go into it knowing that, and it could be a 5 out of 5 read for you. So good. The next book is Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which is a small town romance, and it focuses on Nora, who is a New York literal agent, who's at the top of her game right now, and she's had her fair share of bad breakups and men leaving her when they've gone on a holiday or a business trip to a small town and basically ended up meeting someone there and then leaving Nora because she they deem her heartless and too focused on her work, blah de blah de blah So she sees herself as this, like, enemy the one that always gets left and loves the city in these romance novels and she loves books there's so many book references in this which i love it was a really nice addition to the read but what happens is her sister libby and her are going through a weird time at the moment and libby's like let's go on a month holiday to sunshine falls which is a little small town and let's just get away together while they're on this holiday she ends up bumping into charlie who is a uh, what is he an editor who she's met two years prior and she kind of deems him a nemesis and her sister is kind of pushing her to have a small town romance to find a hunky farmer or whatnot but she ends up bumping into charlie and the story unfolds from there this is so good i really enjoyed it it not only focuses on romance, it focuses on sister bonds and also herself, like 
Nora has definitely gone through some trauma and she is dealing with stuff she's never properly dealt with before and she definitely learns to process a lot throughout the book and that's what I loved. I really enjoyed that side of it. It didn't just focus on the romance. Um, some bits were very cliche and there was a little bit of a lull in the middle where I was a bit like, oh, I can't wait to finish this. Um, but all in all, I, Nora and Charlie, some of those text messages they sent to each other, I was just like, whoa, this is quick. I mean, they didn't really know each other and then bam. Don't know if anyone else felt that, but I instantly loved their connection and their chemistry. In the end, the book to me wasn't crazy predictable because I, I thought the book was going to end in a different way. But then it ended how all these books typically end, I would say. So then I was somewhat disappointed. I'm sorry if that's too cryptic to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but I don't want to spoil anything. Um, yeah, I might do a little spoiler edition at the end of talking about this because then I can explain what I'm talking about. I gave this a four out of five because it made me laugh. I just love the main character, Nora. It wasn't a typical... She wasn't a typical female main character that you get in these romance novels. And I really liked that. And I liked that her bond with her sister was a massive part to play in the book. And all the book references, I know I mentioned it, but it added some flavour to the writing. I don't know why, because this is not, I guess you could deem it a bit sad, but it's not really a sad book that you get crazy emotional at, I wouldn't say. I would not normally get emotional at a book like this. But when I read the epilogue at the end, I actually got teary. Was during my period, so that could be a factor. <laughs> but I don't know why it just hit me weirdly and I got teary. <laughs> I thought it was such a nice way to end the book. And it just shocked me. So it had to get billable. It had to be a four out of five. I didn't think it would get a four, but it just, the last quarter of the book, I loved. And it didn't get a five because it was cliche and I didn't like some things in the book. It wasn't like a five star amazing read, but I would 100% recommend this. I now can't wait to read another book of this author because I, I did enjoy it that much. I am going to do a little spoiler bit now so I could talk about the bit, so I could talk about something. So I'm going to timestamp it, just skip if you haven't read this book because you don't want to know the spoiler there was a moment in this book where i did not think she'd be a, like end up with charlie because nora talks about how she likes books where she skips to the end and reads the last page because she likes books that good things end bad things end and that's the point of life like things end and that's that and you move on with your life and because charlie has to stay in sunshine falls and nora obviously want, loves New York and wants to go back there and then get, takes his job. I was like, is this book going to end and they're not going to be together? I feel like I would have cried if that happened. With happiness for her for sticking to what she wanted to do, but sadness because her and Charlie are so good together. And I was thinking, damn, they're not going to get together. But then they did. Which was I disappointed about? I'm in the mood to be heartbroken. <laughs> you know, I want my soul destroyed by a book. And I think it would have been close if they weren't to get, didn't end up together. So I was a little bit disappointed. But then I loved the ending altogether. Like the ep epilogue and everything. So yeah, if you agree, comment below. So that was all three books that I read that focused on relationships and personal experiences in February. If you've read any of these and you agreed with what I said or disagreed, pop it in the comment box below because I just love to hear everyone else's um, like opinions and stuff. That's the whole point of this channel. I want to chat to everyone about the books I'm reading. <laughs> if you've got any recommendations on books like Honey and Spice or Book Lovers, please drop them down below because I'm surprised with how much I love them. And two four out of fives, a 1, 2.5, it's not a bad reading month in terms of relationship books. So, I will be doing a 10 new mangas I've started to read this year. 
as my next video. So if that sounds up your street, make sure you look out for that video. Hope you have a good day and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.